Uh, hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to do an NPC replacer for the apostasy mod list. I'm going to be doing this on version 1.1, which released today, August 29th. This tutorial is generally applicable to any mod list. Um, apostasy is my mod list, so it's the one I'm going to be showing you on. And this is what I believe to be the best practice for replacing an NPC in the list. The list does use its own easy NPC output, so if you were comfortable doing that, you could also just regenerate the easy NPC output and then redo all of the custom patching from there. But the way that I do my easy NPC output personally is a little convoluted, so it's not I would I would not suggest remaking easy NPC and I would suggest doing this instead. Unless, of course, you plan on changing a lot of NPCs, because then that's a case where easy NPC might be better, especially if you're going to be using a lot of different mods. But anyways, I've downloaded two mods for this. Um, I'm going to be replacing Serana first with the Serenade, another Serana replacer. Uh, and then I'm going to be replacing Ori with Urban's Majestic Ori. Um, and the reason I'm going to be showing you both of these is Serana as a vanilla NPC is only really dependent on um, on the easy NPC merge and then whatever it happens downstream. But Ari as an NPC or as a custom follower has a little bit of a different setup. So I'm going to be showing you both um, and what I think is best practice for doing it. So I already have them installed down here, but I'm going to rerun through the Serenade foam mod because I think it has some stuff that I want to talk about. So, some NPC replacers have foam mods, some don't, but um, if, a, if an NPC has a custom skin option and a, like, use my own skin option, generally speaking, I would suggest that you use the custom skin option. There are a couple reasons for this, uh, but the main one is that... Uh, NPCs are made with specific sets of assets, and if you want your NPC to look as close to the author's screenshots as possible, having a similar asset setup is ideal for that. So, if you have the option of custom skin, then you should probably take it. The downside to custom skin assets is that you're going to be having to load a whole extra set of diffuse, normals, um, speculars, subsurface, you know, you're going to have to load all of those extra textures uh, at all times when you have the NPC. So it's going to use up a little bit more VRAM. This is why mods like racial skin variants are pretty performance intensive. But if it's just going to be for like a couple NPCs, it's probably fine. So I'm going to select yes uh, for the version here. It, you can choose whichever you want. I don't think this specifically matters. If you have something like this where you have a tweak plugin, um, I know for this mod, the tweaks plugin and the normal plugin are the same name. Generally speaking, uh, I would just say no to this. And I, I think it will just make it easier. Uh, a lot of tweaks plugins are going to be like another mod that's added on afterwards. So I would just say no. Also, a lot of these tweaks, Lightfoot, no stealth detection. Uh, these two things are included in my follower tweaks, which you'll be forwarding anyways. And the calc max level to 60. Uh, apostasy sets the max level of every follower to 50. So you don't want this, ideally. Height slightly increased. Um, this would be the only real reason to take this tweaks. I don't think it's necessary, so I'm just going to ignore it. And then if you have like patches here, uh, I would suggest ignoring them and just taking none. The list does use Daughter of Cold Arbor, for example, but you're going to be forwarding my patched version of it anyways when you do my method of an NPC replacer, so I would just not take the patch. And that's it. That's the foam mod. Um, I'm just not... Yeah, yeah. We're just going to replace the patch. And so we have it down here, and we're going to activate it, enable it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go check conflicts. And we see here that the NIF for Serana's head is winning. And we have no losing conflict files. 
you might also have the .dds file that's named the same that's in the winning conflicts tab right now it's down here because apostasy ships with the archive parsing disabled by default in mo2 because that setting uses up a lot of extra um, bandwidth and slows the virtual file system for mo2 a lot so you just want to make sure that you're not losing file conflicts um depending on what they are like you don't want to be losing on this like face gen data dot nif and you don't want to be losing on the face gen data dot dds because these are the two things that if you're losing the file conflict here but you have it patched correctly in xedit you're going to end up with the dark face bucking game uh and if you have it winning here but then you don't have the right conflicts winning in xedit you're going to end up with dark face bucking game you need to make sure that this matches the xedit stuff um and so I'm going to enable the Majestic Ari one as well while I'm here, just because I have it installed. I'm not going to walk through the install of that specifically. Um, again, here we see it's winning the NIF and it's winning the DDS over Foxglove. And so now we're going to go to the bottom. Uh, the Serenade one would also be down here, but I already moved it previously, and I guess MO2 just saved my load order positioning. Um, but I would recommend that you put these plugins right here. Uh, you won't have the quick port, but right between the APO location names and the flat world map framework plugin. For NPC replacers, this is an ideal spot to put it. For other mods, this is not applicable, but for NPC replacers, this is a fine spot to put it. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to boot Xedit. I'm not going to tell you guys how to install Xedit. Um, I, I assume that everyone who wants to modify the list will at least be able to figure out how to install Xedit. Um, so I'm not going to walk through that for now. If it's requested enough, then maybe I'll make a video on it. But you want to make sure that all of these plugins are enabled. And then you want to hit OK. And then I'm going to take a sip of water while this loads. And so... If it's your first time running Exit, it might take a while because it's going to have to build the cache. Uh, I've already built the cache, obviously, because I, uh, I, I use Exit a lot. But it's going to take 40 seconds to two minutes or whatever. Um, and we're just going to wait for this to load. Once it finishes loading, it's going to pop up a mod groups window. And you can either enable those or you can disable them. It's not really going to matter. Um, at least for NPCs, I don't really use mod groups for NPCs, so you're not gonna you're not gonna save yourself that much visual clutter. And we're gonna go down, and we're gonna find. Actually, we're gonna filter our Serenade plugin, and we're gonna open it up. And what you can do to do that quickly is you can just hover over this and hold Alt, and then click it, and it will. Uh, you, you'll open everything. And so we see here, the only conflicting records are the Serana Hood, which is winning, the Serana Hood armor add-on, which is winning, and then the NPC record, which is what we want to change. And so what I would suggest is all of this stuff up here makes it kind of difficult to read. So I'm going to hide most of it. I'm going to hide this stuff. Um, the only stuff you actually need to be showing is this APO Sin Face Fixer plugin, and then the Serana Replacer that you have. Uh, anything else you don't actually need, but, um, what this, what this does basically is this APO Sin Face Fixer plugin is a uh, synthesis patcher that I have set up to forward all of the appearances from this NPC merge with all of the default plugin data from the winning uh, plugin right before it. Um, so there's two ways to do this. Either you can right click copies override from the face fixer plugin, or you can do it from your patch or your, your, your new replacer. Um, I'm going to do it from the replacer because it gives me more to talk about. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this override. 
we're going to make a new ESP plugin. Uh, make sure it's this. You have one, you have two, and you have three, and you want the third one. The first one is just an ESP plugin. The second one is an ESP plugin flagged as an ESM. The third one is an ESP plugin flagged as an ESL. Uh, you want the third one. You can do the first one if you want, but you want the third one. Don't do any of the ones that say ESM because you will make your patch unusable. And then we're just going to name it APO Serenade Replacer. Um, you can call it whatever you want. That's just what I'm going to name it for the sake of the video. So we have our plugin here. And so the first thing we're going to look at is in this VMAD tab, um, you notice that the Sin Face Fixer plugin empties these properties. So we're going to drag that over. Then you notice that it adds this doesn't affect stealth meter. So we're going to drag it over. This stuff has no conflicts. We're going down to the actor effects. We notice that this is not present on face fixer. So we're going to right click and remove that. And then for the worn armor, what this is, uh, what this like record is, is any NPC that has a custom skin is going to have a worn armor record because that's how the custom skin is distributed to the NPC, basically. Um, most NPCs in the list by default will have a worn armor record because that's the way that Easy NPC builds the patching, um, even if that NPC is using vanilla skin. So if your replacer doesn't have a custom skin here, then it's going to look like this if you copy it over right from here, where you don't have a custom skin here. Um, leave it like that. Don't forward this. Because if you forward this into here, you will end up with Nexiums. Um, because your face and skin are using different textures. Um, at worst or at best, you're just not going to get the custom skin, which you, you wanted the custom skin um, if, you, if you took it. So we're just going to forward that again. And then here, uh, we see the Lightfoot perk and the controller perk are added by APO follower tweaks. So we're just going to drag over that perks and drop it in the replacer. It's going to ask if you want to add a master, just say yes. Down here, we see that APO outfit distribution adds a uh, different weapon to Serana and removes her elven dagger. So we're just going to drag this over and it's going to ask if we want a master and we're just going to say yes. And then down here is the head part section. So we're going to ignore the follower head part stuff because don't worry about it. Um, but so this is like, this is the first actual section of the NPC replacer that we care about for most NPC replacers. And you don't want to just like drag this forward. Okay. You don't, you don't want to just make this green. You know, you don't want to just like remove this, make it green. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't want to do, you don't want to do this. Uh, this, this, this will not work. You want to forward the entire head part section from your new replacer and just leave it like this. Don't, don't, don't touch it. Like if you forward it from face fixer and it looks like this, just forward this. Don't try to make this green. You will fuck up the NPC. Uh, the next two things are the QNAM lighting and the tint color on skin. So it looks like Serenade uses the same tag QNAM and tint color as vanilla, uh, which is what this yellow text means. It means that it's identical to master file. Um, and NPC merge and face fixer use different values. Again, you don't want to do this. Do not just forward this and make this green because that's how you end up with Nexiums. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the QNAM lighting from your texture from your NPC replacer is winning. Same with tint color down here. Don't just forward this to make it green. Just keep the settings from your NPC replacer that you're adding. And that's it. I mean, that's all we have for this replacer. So we're going to go look at the Ari one. So we open Ari, we open this. The only thing conflicting is NPC record. So as you see here with the Ari, uh, the only thing that's actually relevant here 
is there's no like end goal here. There's just Ari, Ari's replacer, and then follower tweaks. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to copy Majestic Ari as overwrite. I'm gonna call it Apo Majestic Ari Replacer. Uh, I would not suggest using this naming format, but this is just what I'm doing for the sake of tutorial. So the first thing we see, uh, Apostasy does this for all followers. It makes their max level 50, so I would forward that for consistency. Here's the worn armor thing I was talking about earlier. You don't want to just forward this, so just leave it the way it is. You want to forward the perks like we did with Serana. And as we see, there's uh, not much happening here. Um, head parts, again, just keep keep your replacers head parts winning uh for hair color if this is relevant keep your replacers winning for weight keep your replacers winning the only issue with weight is if you've already met this npc in game then if you if you've already met this npc in game and you're adding a replacer that changes their weight then when you go in game you need to use the console command set npc weight to x where x is the weight in the replacer record so if you had met Ari in game and already and you wanted to change the replacer her weight would be set to 52 that's baked into your save so when you go in game you'd want to click on her in game and you'd want to set set npc weight zero uh, that will fix any neck gaps that occur uh, and then we see Ari outfit um, and we're just gonna forward this but we might want to edit this. So for Ari specifically, um, we can forward this default outfit into the replacer. Uh, because the replacer that Ari uses by default has a wig, which is this, the Ari wig and Ari antlers. So you probably don't want those with the new replacer. Um, but I'm just going to remove those for now. And then going through the rest. We have the right QNM lighting. Don't forward this stuff. Just keep what your replacer has. We have the right skin tone. Again, don't forward this. Just keep what your replacer has. Um, and that's it. And we're just going to save these. And I would boot up game to show you that it works, but I don't want to re record this video again. So we're just going to enable our patches. And you can right click and just send to top. And they'll send all the way up to where your replacers are. They'll overwrite. And when you go in game, your replacers will work. Um, that's it. So if you enjoyed the video, then uh, hopefully this helped you at least. Uh, if you just watched this video and you didn't actually need the tutorial, then I don't know what you're doing. Um, but I might make more of these depending on what people want. Uh, I made this because it's a really common question. And I think I'm a little tired of trying to explain to people what I think is the ideal way of doing this, um, because it's not super easy to follow, I don't think. And also, NPC replacers are like one of the first things that kind of got me into modding, and there was a pretty big lack of good tutorials at the time, so hopefully this, this is helpful. Um, but yeah, other than that, I hope that this was a useful guide. If there are anything else that you want as a guide, then comment it below. Maybe I'll make it nothing too difficult. But yeah, have a good one.